All right, let's, uh, let's find out what you're up to in here. This is our garage, which is going to be half food storage and half workshop, but this is Buddha's story, so here we go. Okay. Um, yeah, we can see it's a, it's a mess. There's stuff everywhere. Um, there's a lot of projects we want to do about the place, but uh, I'm a bit anally retentive, so I need some proper work area. So I'm starting with this um, this bench along here, and I'm, I've got the plywood that will came at a very good uh, very good deal. So basically doing joinery cabinets as you'd find in a kitchen, but it's all 18 mil plywood, so it's heavy as shit. But that's good because it's solid, so I have a good workspace to work on. Recess for the drop saw, cabinets, drawers to pull out and shit like that. Still have a few to build. Um, we'll just get some good storage. And this is all going to be for what tools and machines, get them out of the way, get organised. And once I've got this set up, I'm going to build basically in this area here, an assembly table. Sort of a fancy version of saw horses and plywood with more storage underneath that. Things like band saws and thicknesses that don't need to be out all the time. I guess the general layout will be what you see here. Basically three more cabinets to build. Another cabinet here, which will be total length of 2.4 metres so that I can just use one bit of plywood for the top. I'm going to do a double layer of plywood for the top so that I can put a bit of aggression to what I'm doing. And another cabinet will be here, equidistance off the wall is that one so that I can achieve a 45 degree return here. Plenty of bench space, shelving, more organisation, shelving, shelving. And one of the key things that I'm doing in here is getting it ready for food storage as well, like preserves and the freezers and stuff like that. So you can see on this wall and behind the oak cabinet, which is obviously blocking the view, that we're lining the walls with plywood. And when money allows and we've got money and time, I'm going to rip off the external cladding, insulate, paper, new cladding. Maybe reuse the old cladding, we'll see how it goes. But getting the insulation and the paper in there is key. Paper's easier from outside, hence ripping off the external cladding. And we might, this whole room, this whole garage is fully lined and insulated with plywood. It'll be good for storing food. At the moment, during the summer, it's like an oven in here, so. It'll also help keep the bloody rats out. Like shitting all over <laughs> my tools and all over the benches and stuff like that. Although the, um, the feral cats are helping with the rat problem at the moment, so that's kind of good. Uh, but yeah, I don't really know what else to say. It's a work in progress, everything will be a work in progress for the rest of my life. Um, yeah, it's getting there slowly but surely. I'm a Hollywood star now as well, so I'm a plumber, I'm a fucking sparky. Now I'm a... A YouTube sensation. Oh yeah. Fucking <laughs> life goals, eh? Yeah. Hashtag first video. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm definitely a rookie amateur. Okay, so are you filming this? Yep. Okay, so for these cabinets, slightly different to how you do kitchen cabinetry. A lot of that is because I'm operating out of a garage with limited tools compared to what a joiner would have in their workshop and I'm sort of hoping one day that I can have some stuff that will replicate the joinery workshop. Key difference to what I'm doing is that when you build a kitchen cabinet, you build a box, and to the bottom of the box, you screw the plastic adjustable feet. If I was to do it that way, that would require buying the plastic adjustable feet. Bugger that. Just do it out of plywood. So what I've done is I've made a template basic shape of a cabinet that's the side of the side of the cabinets so I've got a little notch out at the back this goes against the wall this little notch out gets me clear of the concrete there's a little bit of concrete sticking in and proud of the framing oh you won't be able to see it you can see it over here 
You can just see where the bottom plate sits on the concrete, that concrete's slightly into the room. So this little notch allows for that, so that I can get the back of the cabinet, which has you know, a solid piece of plywood screwed to it, that pushes tight up to the framing, which helps with thermal, uh, a thermal break and also makes it a bit more difficult for the little ratties. This bit at the front, this notch out here, you have it in every bloody kitchen, you know, it's just a cool toe space so you can get your feet in a bit closer to the to the bench. And as you can see, template. Yeah, sweet. So all I have to do is get my get a piece of plywood from the stack over there. This is permanently my sort of temporary, not permanently, a temporary assembly table. So I get that piece there, and the first thing I've got to do is get a square edge, because that's all that's like primo square before the notches are taken out, it's a perfect square. So I take my T-square. Oh, I guess the problem is that those bits of plywood, they're all, they've all been used before for different projects. They've all got cuts in them, nothing square and straight. You might find the occasional edge which is square. You can work off that, simply put the template on, trace it, cut it, perfect, easy. Uh, but if you have to square an edge up, T-square, mark it, and you cut it with a rail saw. Rail saw, if you don't know what a rail saw is, it's pretty common these days. Revolutionary piece of machinery for a garage joiner builder. Simply a saw that has a groove in it, which runs in this aluminium extrusion, it cuts a perfectly straight line. There's no wobbling, there's no clamping levels and straight edges down. It's just chuck it on and chop chop. And uh, anyone else who's familiar with joinery will know what. What's going on here? These pieces they keep it square, but also when you put your bench top on, you screw up from underneath, and then it then it's just rock solid. You don't have to piss around with framing and bits of forbitive. It's all this plywood and it's strong. And anyone else who knows anything about wood and concrete knows that you don't want to have wood touching concrete. So you put this DPC, damp proof course, underneath it, between the concrete and the plywood, and it stops the transfer of moisture. And it's just a bitumen based paper with sand on it. Does the job. Will it hold itself for a sec? I can show you a big piece. Yep. <clears throat> this comes on a roll. It just comes in a roll like this, and there's all different sizes. You can get it up to 200 mil wide, depending on what you you need it for. Just, yeah, just good stuff. Good thing about this stuff is it's cheap. About 15 dollars for a roll, and you get 20 lineal meters to add. Um, so I could waffle about this all day long. Well, I couldn't actually. I'm already sick of this, but. Um, a big part of the reason why I'm doing it in this cabinetry style as opposed to permanently building it into the wall is because this is a temporary workshop eventually this will be like right on lawnmower over here and you know proper gardening stuff that, for the property and all of this all the tools the workshop the benches the saws the whole lot will be over in the pole shed across the way there uh, but that it's not happening straight away because we don't have electricity over there yet and four grand for power over there is a little bit uh, down the track shall we say so yeah temporarily I'm building it in here and it's all just screwed together so it's just pull a few screws out chuck cabinets in the back of the trailer whisk them over when the time comes
some progress today. Fortunately, when uh, earlier on we're doing a time lapse and somebody turned the uh, <laughs> turned the camera, and then, it was me. And I didn't know how to do the things. So it's not my department. So we missed a whole bunch of me putting the cabinet together. You probably saw me cutting some pieces. My bad. That's that last cabinet on the end. Um, I set this out so that it'll be 2.4. Well. 2390, so a tick under 2.4 meters, which is a full sheet of jib, so that the bench top can go on and be nice and continuous and seamless and just, you know, just so it didn't look shit. Uh, so, yeah, I've got the last cabinet in, the bench top is on, it's a double layer of 18mm plywood, so it's nice and um, solid. Pound away on that with your chisel and mallet and all that sort of thing, it should be pretty good. It's not a perfect work, it's not a carpentry workbench, but for like a minor saw station, it's <coughs> good enough. This is just temporary, so it looks nice. Yeah. It's a bit of back walking, so when you put sheets of plywood up on the wall, you're closing the wall, there's something to screw into apart from just the studs. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the day's progress. Done with the finishing. Just need a, a light sand and then some varnish once I've got some varnish or. Yeah, I don't know. Don't know what code it with, but. So when I was setting up, obviously I want to recess the miter saw so that it's it's uh, at the same height as the bench top. You do that so that when you finish a cut, your pieces aren't falling away, or you don't want the bench. Definitely don't want the bench top too high because if the bench top's too high, you can just see it. But you make the cut and everything collapses in onto the blade and it binds the blade and throws the saw at you. Which can probably uh, cause you to lose a finger like my old man did yesterday using one of these. <laughs> Don't dig him on YouTube, man. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, Jim. There's a carpenter called Stumpy Nubs. An actual carpenter called Stumpy Nubs on, on uh, YouTube. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Guess what my old man's new nickname is. Um, so, yeah, I set the score up so that it would be pretty much perfect. I was going for a half a mil lower. So that when you finish the cut, the material falls away from the blade. And I don't know how I did it, but I actually got it bang on a half a mil. This side looks a bit funny because there's no bench top on this yet. I've still got to build this corner. But if you compress that, that eight that 18 mil piece, this represents what the bench top will be. Two pieces. Half a mil. It's fucking perfect. So happy with that. Um yeah, it's a pretty good day. I even did the toe kick, I thought that would be something that I wouldn't bother about for months, but if you're trying to keep out the raddies, you know, good just to do it. So that, that piece there is now secure, the rats, it's rat proof, which is pretty great. Apart from that, but if you do climb down and get stuck. Well, that's pretty much all I've got to say on this thing, you know, so it is what it is. Bench, 2.4 metres, plenty of space that way, open the garage door, plenty of space that way. This way, once all that's built, I'll have good space that way as well. I don't know where it'd be. Probably about the same, 2.4 metres. So good for cutting framing, good for cutting anything. Um, just got to fill up the drawers and the space. So I haven't done the cupboard doors yet. Uh, purely because we don't have the hinges. So I'm <laughs> um, going to use proper cabinetry hinges. Uh, but it requires buying them. And... Um, an hour away from the shop, so I'm not just going to pop down to Mighty Megas. It's a long time between trips, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's sort of a week or two weeks between trips into town, so um, yeah, that could be probably something that I forget next time I go to town as well. So yeah, see how it goes. But yeah, so this section of it is usable now. We put the stuff in it, do the doors and all that sort of shit later. Um, and that means we can empty this. Uh, yeah, somewhat, somewhat. A lot of that stuff in there is going to go into cabinets up here. So it's like fasteners and bolts and all sorts of stuff. So that'll make way for my preserves. We have to start making some preserves to make room for them. <laughs> hey, two and a half jars of fijar preserves so far, yeah, <laughs> and some pumpkins, and pumpkins, puppies. <clears throat> All right, cut.